This plot here is the check plot. We actually burned this area back in 96. It's been 17 years since the last time this, this particular area has been burned. We haven't burned it at all again since, uh, since we started these plots eight years ago. It's a very stark contrast to these other plots. A lot of the same species are present in, you know, in all the plots. What it goes to show you is, is without fire, we can see exactly what happens here. We see, again, especially the woody species become very dominant. Again, they're always present, but with fire, they don't become dominant. Fire frequency, again, shows you the key. We're burning every two years. We're keeping the sumac short stature and down. Whereas in here, as you can see in this plot here, you know, the sumac ranges anywhere from three foot to, to well over six foot tall. Also, again, we have fire intolerant species, eastern red cedar. If you kill it with fire, it's not going to come back. They don't re-sprout. They don't come back. You know, you can see we have one large tree there in the middle, small one coming in. I'm sure we can search through the plot, find others that are invading into the site because, again, the lack of fire. So what we can see is that the lack of fire, this is what we're going to get. We got to remember also that fire is part of the system. It's just like rainfall, it's just like soils, except the only thing different with fire is, is that we can control it. And the problem is, is we have controlled it to the point where we don't use it. And when we don't use it, this is what can happen. We can start to lose our landscape, and we're seeing that across most all of the Great Plains, and again, across most of our grasslands by losing plant species, wildlife species that are adapted and need specific grassland habitats that are maintained with fire, and we're losing that. And what it would take would be fire. What it's gonna take is probably not one single fire. It's gonna take a couple of burns. You know, this didn't get this way overnight, and it's not gonna change overnight. So under conditions that we burn, with prescribed fire under those set prescriptions that we do to try to control and maintain the fire. It, you know, it, it may take a couple burns to get that back. The other thing to remember too is again, the more woody plants you get on here, the more it suppresses the fine fuel load, the grasses and the other things that are the fine fuels that are there. And so there's less of that to burn. So we have a lot more difficulty with those fires getting them to carry through areas with a lot of heavy woody components and especially if you get a lot of areas with more solid stands of, of cedar trees. We've got areas where we've got uh, where elms and, and other deciduous trees have come in and take starting to take over. Uh, they've shaded out most of the grasses that are there. The grasses are still there but they're just they can't compete in the shade. Those trees do not produce a very large amount of, of leaf litter to burn, so getting fires to carry through those are a lot of times difficult. So we'd have to do some type of extreme prescribed fire event, or you may have to sit around and wait for a wildfire, and you know who knows when that's going to be or, or what. So then the other alternatives, again, would go back to mechanical, possible, possible uh, chemical type to speed up the process to get rid of those larger woody plants, get them down, start the, the fine fuels back growing again so you can implement uh, prescribed fires back in there a little more effective. It'll just take more time and more money. So again, the deal is of uh, burning now, ever so often, saves you a lot of money in the long term. Because if you don't do anything at all, the requirements and the, and the, the, the economics of getting that back is a whole lot higher. Because, what you, because you have to go with mechanical, chemical type stuff to include in there. If somebody has a specific goal for deer and they said they like that, that's fine. The thing you have to remember, do you want the whole place to look like that? And I'm not saying that we need to have everything look like a perfect monoculture of grass because we need that diversity that's out there. What we need is a diversity of habitats that are out there. You know, because again, you, you think back to how a lot of wildlife species respond, they have to have cover. So what is cover? That's areas that hadn't been burned that have grown up a little bit thicker, whether it be ungrazed grass, unburned and ungrazed grass, 
or areas that haven't been burned in a few years that have taller woody components in it. They need areas that they can forage or as in ground nesting birds that roam on the ground, they need areas that they can go and take their brood and find insects and seeds and stuff. So that needs to be areas that have been recently burned and grazed so that it's shorter in stature. You know, then they need areas of thermal cover. So again, they need some of these woody, woody plant species for thermal cover, for protection from that. So you need a little bit of all of it. So again, so burning the whole place the same time every year, that's probably not a good benefit for a lot of these wildlife species. And so you want a little bit of all this having that. So again, patch burning is a very good alternative to doing this. So burning portions of an area uh, and thinking about that and putting that kind of fire management on the ground. 